Hi, my name is Dr Catherine Hughes from Crime Psych. I'm a criminal psychologist. I've done a number of psychological analysis videos in the past where I've drawn on research findings to give an informed opinion of what an offender's behaviour can reveal about their psychology. I draw on aspects of psychology, criminology and sociology to form my opinions. If you do want to learn more about profiling and psychology, take a look at my website for some online courses, blogs and vlogs. In this particular video, I'm going to be discussing Diane Downs. In all of my videos, I do try to focus more on the psychology of the behaviour. However, it is sometimes necessary to include some details. This video contains some details of guns, shooting, murder of children and a psychopath. I'm going to give you a very brief overview of the case and of the offender. Then I'll talk about the upbringing and childhood of the offender. Then I'll discuss the behaviours during the crime that reveal psychological aspects of Diane Downs, as well as discussing any psychiatric or mental illnesses. Her full name is Elizabeth Diane Fredrickson Downs and she was born on the 7th of August 1955. She's an American woman who murdered her daughter and attempted to murder her two other children in May 1983. She told the police that a man had attempted to carjack her and had shot the children and her. Downs shot her three children and drove them in a blood spattered car to hospital. On arrival, Cheryl, who was aged just seven at the time, had already died. Danny was aged three and he was paralysed from the waist down. And Christy, who was aged eight, had suffered a stroke. Downs had also been shot in the left forearm. She claimed she was carjacked on a rural road by a strange man who shot her and the children. However, investigators and hospital workers became suspicious because they decided that her manner was much too calm for a person who'd experienced such a traumatic event. She also made a number of statements that both police and hospital workers considered highly inappropriate. I'll cover those a little bit later in the video. Prosecutors argued that Downs shot her children to be free of them so that she could continue an affair that she was having. The forensic evidence didn't match her story. There was no blood spatter on the driver's side of the car, nor was there any gunpowder residue on the driver's door or on the interior door panel. The police weren't able to find the actual weapon, but they found unfired casings at her home with extractor markings from the murder weapon. Witnesses saw her car being driven very slowly toward the hospital at an estimated speed of 5 to 7 miles an hour, and that's around 8 to 11 kilometres an hour. And that contradicted her claim that she drove to hospital at high speed after the shooting. Much of the case against her rested on the testimony of her surviving daughter, Christy. Once she was able to recover her, her ability to speak, she described how her mum had shot all three children while parked at the side of the road and then shot herself in the arm. Christy was aged just eight years old at the time of the murder and nine years old at the time of the trial. The two surviving children, Daniel and Christy, were adopted by District Attorney Fred Hoogie. He was one of the prosecutors of the case, so he and his wife adopted them. Daniel, the younger child, is a paraplegic as a result of the shooting. Christy has permanent partial paralysis on one side of her body. Downs was convicted of all charges on the 17th of June 1984 and sentenced to life in prison plus 50 years. She was required to serve 25 years before being considered for parole. She remains in prison to this day and still denies the murder and the attempted murder. Diane Downs' mum was just 17 years old when she had her. They were part of a strict religious upbringing where women were expected to be subservient. Her mum had five children altogether. Downs has said that she was so busy trying to be a good wife that she didn't meet Diane's expectations. She was jealous of her father as her mum spent all of the time cleaning rather than spending time with her. Almost all of her childhood memories involve her mother though. Her mum never set the punishments, she just went along with them and never spoke out. And we know this through letters that were exchanged between Downs and Anne Rule, a writer. 
She says that she doesn't remember her brothers and sisters as children, but she does remember that she wasn't allowed to punish them and she was blamed or called a tattletale if she told her father what they did. She was quiet at school and existed on the fringes. She describes herself as shy, quiet and passive, but that teachers loved her. She wasn't allowed to keep up with the latest fashion trends and felt like a freak who didn't fit in. She writes in her diary that she didn't know she was different and assumed everybody thought the same way as her. Downs has testified that her father sexually abused her when she was 12 years old. She says that she was fondled and touched on drives with her father alone. He's never denied it, but he's never confirmed it either. He simply never made any comments about it. She didn't resist because she didn't think that she could. He was the authority figure. She couldn't tell anybody about it either. She said that she experienced the instinctual pleasure from the acts, but became confused about the mixture of hatred and pleasure that she was experiencing. The abuse stopped quite suddenly after they were pulled over on a highway as Downs had tried to jump out of the moving car. She told the police officer that she was crying because she'd had a jab at the doctor's. She ran away from home a few times and self-harmed at the age of 13, but nobody noticed, or if they did, they simply didn't talk about it. She became clinically depressed and lacked sleep. She was expected to be a girl at school and a sexual object at night. Later in her life, she enrolled in charm school, and one day, it's said to be quite suddenly, she became very chatty instead of being shy and withdrawn. She would go then from being quiet and sullen to loud and chatty, from happy and excited to quiet and depressed. She met Steve at the age of 15 and they would go on to marry. He was only seven months older than her, so he wasn't yet one of the men that she hated. She says that he was the only one that made her feel pretty. It's quite normal for a female who has been sexually abused or raped to feel that they need uh, the, a different male figure for protection and support. Her father hadn't provided Downs with the safety and the kind of love that she'd wanted, so she sought it from elsewhere at the first available opportunity. And in looking for that protection and support, it means that these girls enter into very serious relationships straight after leaving home, seeking out that male role model as protection. At the age of 17, her grandmother and grandfather died in a car crash. She was very close to her grandmother. Then, shortly after, her dog died in an accident and she blamed her father as he'd called the dog to him. Her father would back her into a corner at times and tell her that she wasn't practising her flute hard enough. She wanted to rebel, but she suppressed it. And therefore, her response became face-scratching for her. She wanted to hurt him, but she couldn't, so she hurt herself. She went to college, but was told to leave for promiscuous behaviour. In her book, Small Sacrifices, Anne Rule says that she and another boy had sex on a church altar. Steve went away with the Navy for a time and returned, and then they spent a lot of time together. Her father kept a very close eye on her and made sure that she came straight home after work. After she stayed out all night, he went around to Steve's with a shotgun, saying that if he wanted to spend the night with her, he had to marry her. So they got married. And a month after, he told Diane that he had a date with a girl and had to keep it, as he'd asked her a month before. He continued to see other women. Their first child, Christiane, was born in 1974. Cheryl Lynn followed in 1976, with Stephen Daniel being born in 1979. The couple divorced, though, in 1980 because Steve thought that Steve and Daniel, known as Danny, was the result of an affair that Diane had had. They didn't have a good relationship and she never found the love and adoration that she was looking for. Psychiatrists have diagnosed her with narcissistic, histrionic and antisocial personality disorders. I'll talk about each condition individually first. Narcissistic personality disorder is a mental condition in which people have an inflated sense of their own importance, a deep need for excessive admiration and troubled relationships and a lack of empathy towards other people. But behind that mask of extreme confidence, there's a very fragile self-esteem that's very vulnerable to criticism. 
People with narcissistic personality disorder may be generally unhappy and disappointed when they're not given the special favours or given the admiration that they believe that they deserve. They might find relationships unfulfilling and others may not enjoy being around them. We can see evidence of this when Downs told Anne Rule that her mother ignored her because she was too busy trying to be a good wife. Those who have narcissistic personality disorder are in love with the idealised, grandiose image of themselves. And they're in love with this inflated self-image because it allows them to avoid any feelings of insecurity. They use various tactics to support their inflated ego and their sense of entitlement. And it's this need to prop themselves up that brings about the negative behaviours. Those with extreme scores within antisocial personality disorder are considered to be psychopaths. And in medical terms, that a psychopath would be diagnosed with antisocial personality disorder. Psychopaths are defined as individuals who have no concern for the feelings of other people. They have a complete disregard for any sense of social obligation and an inability to form lasting emotional ties. When psychopaths do turn to criminality, they'll use charm and manipulation to coerce their victims into doing what they want. They might even use that charm to gain the trust of a person or victim. Both narcissists and psychopaths love bomb those that they're interested in at first. The most common understanding though of a psychopath is someone who's skilled at lying and manipulating others and has very little empathy and feels no remorse. Although psychopaths can come across as quite charming, they're characterised as selfish and remorseless people who use others for their own selfish needs and desires. They often have an impulsive, chronically unstable and antisocial lifestyle. One nurse who gave an interview recalled that her eyes lacked depth. And that's most likely because psychopaths can't display empathy. They might try to imitate certain emotions, but sometimes their performance lets them down in things like their eyes. Histrionic personality disorder is characterised by a pattern of excessive attention-seeking behaviours. These usually begin in early adulthood and include inappropriate seduction, an excessive need for approval, People diagnosed with the disorder are likely to be lively, dramatic, vivacious, enthusiastic and very flirtatious. All of these disorders are easy to see in Diane Down's life. She has extreme ups and downs. She wants more attention and affection than she ever got. Nothing was good enough for her. She constantly sought out attention from others after a long childhood of not feeling seen and feeling different. It can be quite difficult to separate psychopathic and narcissistic traits. I'd suggest that the main difference is narcissists feel a need for attention and affection from other people's attention, whereas psychopaths insert themselves into other people's life because they feel superior and because they feel that they have the right to. She had trouble separating feelings of power and control with love. She stalked a man that she was having an affair with. Robert Knickerbocker has said that he was relieved that she'd moved away from the area as he was able to reconcile with his wife. It's been reported that Downs has claimed that there are eight levels of intelligence and she was at level seven. And that's just typical of a psychopath to say, hey, I'm really intelligent, I'm really clever, I am superior to you. She did speak intelligently. She didn't appear to be emotional, though, when she arrived at the hospital. And that's because she simply lacks empathy. She even rang Robert Knickerbocker from the hospital. It's widely thought that she tried to kill the children so that she could be with him. Robert Knickerbocker told investigators that she'd said that she would be willing to kill his wife to be with him. And that's typical of a psychopath to simply get rid of something when it stands in the way of getting what they want. She stalked him for a while. At first, she offered to kill Robert's wife so that they could be together. And after he'd said that he didn't want children, she attempted to remove them too. She shot the children and then drove extremely slowly to the hospital. I assume that she was hoping all three would die before she arrived there. When Downs arrived at the hospital to visit her children, she phoned Robert Knickerbocker and he said that she'd stalked him. Once Christy had recovered from her stroke 
and had learned to talk again. She described how her mother shot all three children while parked at the side of the road and then shot herself in the arm. As I said earlier, Christy was eight years old at the time of the shooting and nine years old when she testified. When Christy was in hospital, Downs sat with her and repeatedly said, I love you, but in a very flat tone. The heart rate monitor that Christy was attached to showed significant increases in her heart rate, which continued until after her mother left. She was genuinely scared of her mother. Downs escaped prison in 1987 and was recaptured just a few blocks away from the prison. She received an additional five year sentence for that escape attempt. In her first application for parole in 2008, Downs reaffirmed her innocence. She writes, Over the years, I've told you and the rest of the world that a man shot me and my children. I've never changed my story. A district attorney wrote, Downs continues to fail to demonstrate any honest insight into her criminal behaviour. Even after the convictions, she continues to fabricate new versions of events under which the crimes occurred. She alternately refers to her assailant as a bushy-haired stranger, two men wearing a ski mask, or drug dealers and corrupt law enforcement officials. Downs faced her second parole hearing on the 10th of December 2010. She was denied parole and under a new law wouldn't be eligible for parole for another 10 years. She would have to wait for to apply for parole again until 2020 and she's 65 years old this year. Downs has penned at least two lengthy handwritten letters to parole officials defending herself. In a 12-page handwritten plea to the parole board, Downs asserted that her escape attempts should be viewed as a good thing. She writes, Of all the felonies on the law books, Escape from prison is the only one that indicates a healthy attitude about society. If you truly want to know what sort of prisoner won't come back to prison, your first clue is the prisoner who thinks more about being on the outside than being well-adjusted or programmed here. She goes on to write, I am not ashamed of my escape. At least this shows that I don't want to be here and will do everything I need to do to escape and not come back. Despite her long history of trouble behind bars, Downs has said that she still deserves parole. She writes, I don't do drugs or brew hooch. She stated, I don't smuggle tobacco or get officers walked off. In 25 years behind these steel bars, I have not in capital letters, cracked one of these ladies over the head. If you had lived inside this place, you might understand what an accomplishment that is. Downs also defended herself against a report's assertions that she was able to keep her emotions under tight control, presenting only socially acceptable feelings. She wrote, Every day, billions of people wake up to stress and chaos. Downs wrote in response, cranky bosses, mad commuters, gas prices that make no sense, dog do on the new carpet, and they keep their emotions under control, presenting only socially acceptable feelings. That's what separates civilised human beings from gangs and barbarians, she writes. This shows a psychopath who doesn't believe that they should be in prison. She's sure everybody else is beneath her. She's so arrogant that she thinks that she can convince a parole board that attempting to escape from prison should be viewed as a good thing, that not smashing ladies in the head was a recognisable accomplishment. In conclusion, then... Diane Downs is a narcissistic psychopath with histrionic personality disorder. She was deeply unhappy in her own life and was most likely abused as a child. In fact, in letters that she wrote about victims of child sexual abuse going on to cause harm themselves, she said that there needed to be a generation of people who'd not been abused to eradicate these behaviours. She had a chronically unstable life. She was always looking for ways to fill the void. She wasn't an attentive mother 
and her children were afraid of her. I don't believe that this woman will ever be released from prison. I hope you enjoyed this psychological analysis of Diane Downs. More importantly, I hope you learned something new from it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.